Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess the microphone isn't. It's right there. Device. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Zenman Lee, who is a professor of obstetrics and gynecology and women's health. Dr. Lee received his MD from Fujian Medical College in Fujian, China, and then an MS in histology and embryology from Tishan Medical College in Tishan, China. And then a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology from U of L uh, in 1995. Um, since 2013, as professor at affiliated to Tishan Medical University in China. He is a prolific author. He has 161 peer reviewed research publications. He's received a number of awards for his research an expert on the molecular mechanisms of gonadotropins and sex steroid hormones, developed a number of unique gene knockout and transgenic mouse models. He's been PI on a number of grants and has trained 28 clinical fellows, 19 postdocs, and six grad students. He served as a reviewer for NIH study sections as well as a variety of journals, including molecular and cellular endocrinology, which I <laughs> as editor and very grateful for his review. Um, Zedman is always involved in new discoveries and collaborations, and today he's going to talk about his work, the title of which is on the screen. And so thank you for speaking with this group. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, today I'm going to uh, present some of the uh, our studies. Um, our, from our lab and also in collaborate with other laboratories. Uh, the study of the uh, latex cell failure therapy, uh, mainly is uh, using the animal model we have been created more than 20 years ago. And I have no conflict of interest to be clear. Okay, the latex cells, is, uh, it is named by uh, German Anatomics, uh, friends, Ledex, who is first to describe them. Ledex cells is a, a group of the somatic cells located in the interstadium and uh, in addition to a semi-fibrous tubular in the pedicle. The Ledex cells is belong to an uh, epithot, uh, ep epithelioid cells uh, with a permanent large nuclei, uh, your synophytic the in the adult, the uh, testes, the in the stadium majority contains the majority of cell is synthetic cell, but also other cell types such as microfluidic, some of the fibroblasts. The in the adult testes, synthetic cell is a postmitotic cell. Normally. They are not divided. In northern study, they have been shown that adolescent cells can be spontaneously recovered after they are eliminated by a compound called ethanol dimensional sulfonate. So suggest that there's a living stem cells exist in the adult testes. The best established function of the latex cell is to produce androgen testosterone. Latex cell express LHCG receptor. The biosynthesis of the testosterone is under postpair control of the pituitary gonadotropin utilizing hormone LH. The testosterone can act locally with the intensity and as well as can deliver it to the body. Um, the, uh, it is essential for the development and maintenance of the male sexual characteristics and also male fertility. So the testosterone also contribute to the anabolic uh, status of the somatic cells and play a very crucial and uh, physiological role in the body target tissues in the body. The in mammals, at least the two types of the uh, latex cells, 
uh, in the field of Thai speech and the adult Thai speech gradually develop in develop. So the fetal lytic cells is sought to uh, originate from uh, ceramic epithelium and a mesophilic, a mes, uh, mesophilic. In human, those the fetal lytic cells appear about eight weeks of gestation and reach the peak about 14 to uh, 14 to 18 weeks of gestation. And after that, they are gradually uh, disappear by the time the, uh, the birth. In the postnatal testes, the fetal test, the athletic cell is very hardly uh, detectable. In postnatal testes, there's another group of the lytic cell called adult lytic cell. It's a newly developed. The origin of the adult lytic cell is not entirely clear so far. There are some evidence showing that the adult lytic cell in the uh, postnatal testes is derived from peritubular cells or perivascular cells and undergoing a process called deep differentiation to give rise of the adult lytic cell. And also some data suggest that the adult lytic cell might directly differentiate from uh, testes mesenchymal mas cells. Or some suggest that they might derive from residual fetal lytic cells in the adult testes. The adult testes is the lip it's the lytic cell there with the full capacity to synthesize testosterone. But the fetal testes, uh, fetal lytic cells only produce androstin dial, the lack of the, uh, the uh, 17 beta HSD, so they are unable to convert androstin dial to the uh, testosterone. In addition to testosterone and uh, biosynthesis, the lytic cells also produce a number of the factors. So incident that goes factor three is the is essential for testes descent. Also, they can prevent germ cell uh, apoptosis. And they have been utilized as a functional marker of adult lytic cells. The incident that goes factor one, chronic stimulative factor, also have been shown produced by adult lytic cell to influence testicular microphages micro differentiation. The adult lytic cell also produce acetosin, post-grounding, post and mesoplasmic. The influence on the constructivity of the pretubular cell for spermiation or a transfer of the spermatoma and testicular fluid from testes to epidermidis. So the, I think as you are all endocrinologists and you are very familiar with hypochondrialism, uh, this slide I just put it in here, but otherwise it's not necessary. So hypochondrialism in man is referred to a decrease one or both of two major functions of the testes. They are sperm production and testosterone production. Those abnormality usually result from the disease of the testes, the so-called primary hypogonadalism, such as genetic cells failure or disease of the pituitary or hypothalamus, the so-called secondary hypogonadalism. The patient has a primary hypogonadalism if the serum testosterone concentration and sperm count are below normal, while the serum gladotropic concentration are above normal. The patient has a secondary hypogonadalism is that the serum testosterone concentration and sperm count are subnormal and serum gradotropin concentration are not elevated or even decreased. So more than 20 years ago, our lab is the first to generate the uh, LH HCG receptor knockout of mice. And those mice, uh, um, except is uh, significant of the hypogonadal phenotype. As shown here, 
they impair sexual development. As you can see, the ambiguous of the external genitalia in the LHCG receptor knockout, male mice. The, the penis, the anal, and the genital distance is uh, become much shorter as compared to the heterozygous animal or wild type animal. And they also have abdominal testes, is cryptokitism. So then the testes is uh, small, the accessory sex organs are under development. As, as you show in here, the size of the testes and accessory sex organ are significant and smaller as compared to the uh, wild type animals. The, the hormone profile showing that the LHCG is sort of knock out male mice have a dr drastic decrease in testosterone, well, a dramatic increase of the gladiotropins. Then the histology uh, of the test is showing that the scat of the in the stadium of uh, the uh, knockout testes contain no adult latex cells. Let's show it here. The spermatogenesis is raised at long spermatic stage. Therefore, those animals is are uh, infertile. So as such, the LHCG result the knockout uh, animal, the male mice, uh, can be recognized as a uh, fetal onset, primarily hypogonadism, and caused by latex cells failure. So over the years, we have been using our lab in cooperation with some other lab and uh, we utilize this animal model to study the, uh, the treatment of the dead cell of failure. So first is uh, testosterone repressive therapy. The dead cell is almost an exclusive source of the testosterone in the body. And the majority of manifestation of hypogonadism is due to a deficiency of the Testosterone. So it is logically to give the exogenous of a testosterone therapy to see they can uh, correct the uh, hypogonadal uh, phenotype. To test the effectiveness of the testosterone replaced with, uh, replacement and, uh, therapy uh, on the uh, sexual development monogenesis and fertility of the LHCG result knockout male mice. What we did is the uh, 21 days fertile uh, male animals and uh, subcutaneously implant and the uh, slow release pattern contain testosterone for eight weeks. The data showing that they can promote the sexual development. As you can see, showing here the anal genital distance is uh, increased body will also increase, and then the size of testes also increase, and then also stimulate testes descend. Then the uh, stimulate the growth of the uh, accessory sex organ include epidermity, seminal vesicle, and vast differences. The hormone profile demonstrate a normal feedback regulation to the uh, testosterone in the pituitary and hypothalamus levels. The histology showing that the uh, LHCG result the knockout, the spermatogenesis is raised in the one spermatic stage. After the, uh, the, the testosterone treatment, they are restore a full spermatogenesis. As you look at the the geminous epithelium of the semifibrous tubular in the not the testosterone treated the uh, testes compared to wild type, you can see all stages of the spermatogenic cells from spermatogonia, spermatocyte, and elongated spermatid and mature spermatroa. However, the testosterone treatment that cannot restore of the adult latex cell in the, in the stadium of the knockout animal. The 
Although the testosterone treatment is able to recover uh, most of the uh, accessory uh, sex organs to stimulate their growth to comparable size with the wild type. However, carefully examined showing the recovery of the epidemics is incomplete. And also the information of the prostate and the vast difference in the uh, testosterone treated LHCG uh, result of male. As you look at here, this is the wild type. You can see the, the nuclear is uh, very uh, located on the bottom of the principal cells and the, uh, the T-treated LCG result of knockout animal, you can see disorder of those nuclei arrangement. And also you can see the leukocytes accumulation among the, in the uh, prostate gland and also some of the necrotic uh, mass also component in the prostate glands. Then a lot of vacuoles present in the vast uh, difference epithelial cells. The fertility test showing that the testosterone replacement therapy can the um, some of those LHCG receptor knockout animal are able to ejaculate. It's about 46%. However, the fertility testing only showing only 15% of those the testosterone treated uh, male are able to serve the pups. So those study demonstrate a lot of testosterone treatment that is effective to, to restore the uh, sexual development, the, uh, the uh, re restore full spermatogenesis, but still they cannot uh, uh, repair, completely repair the, some of the reproductive defects. So the, you are clinician, you know the clinically, so that the testosterone treatment is the most common way to, for the hypochondral uh, patients. But you know the, the test is replacement therapy also associated with a number of the uh, negative and, uh, side effects, such as hypertension, with the uh, PSA or increases the risk of the prostate cancer or cardiovascular mortality or morbidity, etc. So, so therefore, the lytic cell therapy has been proposed to be an alternative therapy for hypochondroidism. So, the theoretically, lytic cells transplantation or the hypogonadotone treatment of hypogonadotone might provide several benefits. First, they potentially to provide a physiological level of testosterone. Second, as I just mentioned, the lytic cell also produce a number of other factors that support reproductive function. So you will transplant the uh, lytic cell in functional in the vivo, it could also provide those factors. Third one, the is potentially establish the normal circadian rhythm and posterity of the testosterone production in response to the uh, pituitary gland So, um, about twenty years ago, our lab collaborated with Doctor Lab Lab uh, uh, College of Medicine, Houston, we are first performed transplant of putative lytic stem cell uh, into uh, LH HCG receptor knockout male mice. At that time, we have very limited knowledge about lytic stem cell and not any mark, specific market available. But based on the study of the other stem cell, they have been uh, showing that the, the stem cell have the common property, they are able to exclude the uh, hostage stack. So that's the, uh, so we resume that the lytic stem cell also share this kind of 
see the property with some other structures such as the horizontal periodic structures. So, so what we did was we the isolate the testicular cells from a, a loss of 26 uh, mice. Loss of 26 mice is a transgenic animal that express E. coli uh, uh, lack T gene and able to stand uh, positive for beta gal and then some of the blue color and we can trace what the transplant cell was uh, differentiated from the uh, recipient host cell. So then those the isolated testicular cells are stand for hosting stuff and then sorted by uh, cytochromatry. So the data the, the, this processor cytometry sorting showing that there is a very, very small portion of those cells they can exclude. They, they, they have termed those cells as a hot skin cell, or they also, they also call side population cells. So it, as indicated here, it's only 0.3% of total testicular cell we put it into it. So we assume this is population uh, uh, stem cells. Then we first transplant those cells into an, uh, one of the strands of the uh, mice, is WWB mice. Uh, just testing to see they can survive when they can uh, populate in, 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 in the, the uh, testes. The result, three months after transplantation, you can see that those cells are uh, uh, survive in the recipient in, in the stadium. Also, they populated as they're standing for the blue color because I said saying that because those uh, transplant cells carry out lactate and identify that the cells. Then, more importantly, those cells are biologic cells. They stand positive for a P450 second critical index. So after this, uh, this one, and then we collect much more cell from a lot of animals. Then we try to plan this so-called so side population uh, is a contemplative radiant stem cell uh, into uh, you know, HCG with some knockout male mice. So five months later, they are, we are showing that the animal transplant with the, those side population of the containing putative native stem cell, they are significantly increase the serum testosterone levels. And the, the level of the testosterone production is dependent on the number of cells we are transplanted. So, and then the histology of testes showing that those transplanted cells survive and express stereogenic markers, P450 cytokinemic enzyme, then also induce a full of spermatogenesis. As I just said, the knockout animal, the spermatogenesis is addressed in the advanced spermatic stage. So this pilot, I would say, I call it pilot study, demonstrate the feasibility of the latex cell uh, transplant therapy to for the uh, the uh, hypogonadal uh, the uh, disease. So the uh, this study also show demonstrated that the the so-called latex stem cell if you isolate from testing is very very limited. So that could be a big hurdle. Uh, for the uh, the uh, latex cell transplant, uh, uh, latex cell therapy. So the here uh, I will not go because for time's sake I will not go to uh, much more detail. But I'll just summarize. In, in over the last the uh, 10, 15 years, uh, a lot of progress has been made by the uh, many lab. Then the this slide just uh, summarizes the recent advances on the latex cell therapy studies. So I believe that most significant progress 
is that the currently the lytic duct -like cell, functional lytic duct -like cell can be produced in vitro from a variety of cells. That even include steroidogenic cell, even non steroidogenic cell. So they are by genetic reprogramming or even chemical induction. So they are able to generate large quantity of the uh, functional genetic like cell for transplantation. So I would and I would say that's the most significant topic. And then, then also there are some studies have been successfully testing and. Uh, in addition to autologous transplantation, they also that the allodraft or even heterodraft. The most, I think, they, they the last year, the one of studies using human uh, testicular malignant cells, then was different into a functional, you know, lytic like cells in vitro, then transplant in the mouth, and then they can survive for as long as uh, two to three months, and then produce the uh, testosterone, and then they, they can improve the the, the the symptom, the phenotype of hypochondriasis. So, so these uh, uh, the in vitro can generate uh, the uh, functional native like cells from a variety of the uh, the other cells. The Together and also they are successful of doing the arrow draft or hetero draft, they those can be uh, overcome that very limited number of the latex cell of ability for transplantation. Another aspect of the progress is the ectopic implantation of latex cell. And the you will, you can implant the uh, location outside of the testes or might be easier. That includes some cutaneous or intracranial injection. Even they have been showing the uh, infusion to the general circulation, those uh, lytic like cells eventually reside in the uh, test piece. So that's one thing is much easier. Another aspect is that some of those hypoglandal patients, they might not have a test piece for injection because due to maybe my legacy, the test piece have been removed or maybe injury, so the patient has no test So, so if they are successful with showing that the lytic cells implant outside the allocation of the test also functional, and also can survive. So, and then another aspect of progress is the try to increase the survivability of the transplant lytic cells. We have been showing that those lytic like cells encapsulated encapsulate by a polymer to become a metal sphere and they implant some cutaneity or inject with intracranial, they can increase significantly increase the survivability of those uh, implant cells. Also can provide the immune attack. So the all those uh, the uh, is I just briefly uh, is that some of those uh, Recent the progress in the latex cell therapy study. However, long term survival of functional cell and safety study is still necessary. To my knowledge, the, the study has been done in animal, northern animal, but also have a successful done on the uh, monkey, the non human primate. But to my knowledge, it is no clinical trial in human so far. So the last thing I can talk about uh, gene therapy. So you know the preclinical or clinical uh, trial of gene therapy has been, been carried out for a number of other diseases. But for lytic cell failure, probably this is the first. So the NICG result knockout uh, resulted in a and the primary hypochondriasm due to the mutation of the IC receptor. So this study we are able to test whether or not you will introduce a functional IC receptor gene 
uh, by sort of gene therapy, they are able to collect this hypoglandular phenotype. So the first, the, uh, we are testing what kind of expression vector will be good uh, for latex cell failure uh, therapy. The Atino associated viral vector is the one that's currently the most popular vector utilized for gene therapy. They contain 11 stereotypes. So the different stereotype has been uh, used for the uh, different target tissue because some of the stereotypes, they are driving gene expression better than the others. So first, we testing uh, five of different stereotype of the adeno uh, associated virus expression vector, uh, AAV1, 2, 6, 8, and 9. And then we make contract that those are uh, the, uh, the vector is uh, expressed two of the latex stem cell marker. One is uh, PDGM receptor alpha, another one is nesting. So the results showing here, AV8 stereotype is stand out. They are driving to, to these two genes expressed in the, in the stadium of the, the mouse type to the, the, the highest. Therefore, we choose AV8. And then to construct the, uh, the gene therapy vector as shown in, in here, the uh, uh, wild type LHCG receptor gene is uh, driving by a vital promoter CAG. So this uh, top panel is uh, the uh, these uh, diagrams illustrate the uh, the in vivo study. We initially using three weeks of the uh, you know HCG receptor knockout male mice, the pivotal knock mice. Then inject the uh, AAV you know HCG receptor gene expression vector into in the stadium of the uh, those testes. And then four, eight, and 12 weeks after, we examine the testosterone production in the serum and as well as in, in the testes. And also the uh, sperm thermomatogenesis by the histology of the testes and also the sperm analysis. Lower panel shows four weeks after post injection of the, the uh, AV8 LICG receptor expression vector. And they are showing that there's uh, the uh, in the LHCG receptor uh, mRNA detectable from the testes of uh, the injected testes. Also, the serum testosterone level is increased as compared the uh, the phosphate buffer injection animals. Then the intratesticular testosterone also increased too. So. The, the, then the further study on the uh, the testes after four weeks of the the viral SCG uh, introducing and uh, injections. So as you can see, the uh, SCG receptor knockout the uh, male mice the in the stadium contain no any steroidogenic cell. Okay, so the immunofluorescence demonstrate that after four weeks of the uh, viral particle injection, so the in the stadium of LHCG receptor knockout uh, contain the uh, steroidogenic cells, which is similar to the wild type or the uh, heterozygous animal, and this is, is the expressed as uh, one of the uh, important that still not genetic enzyme, tip 17 alpha 1. As I mentioned, that uh, insulin that growth factor 3 has been used as a functional marker for adult latex cells. Then, as you can see, in adult testes, in the wild type of heterozygous, they are the cells express high level of insulin that growth factor 3. Then, five weeks after viral injection, as you can see, those animals also express the uh, internet that goes factor three that is not detectable in 
the phosphate found in inject NIHG receptor knockout mice. So the the AAV NIHG injection also restart structural development in those pubertal NIHG receptor knockout mice. As you look at here, they increase the anal and genital distance. That's this is one of the parameters we are to using to evaluate the uh, male and female, uh, the sexual, the ex external genitalia development. So the also you look at the, type, the size of testes and the uh, accessory, the uh, sex organs, if it, uh, seminal vesicles, epidermides, and the uh, mass F difference. So this, those, the graphic showing that the, the weight of the testes, epidermides, seminal vesicle, prostate, and vast difference all significantly increased. Then the length of the vast difference and also the uh, anal genital distance and uh, pineal length is all increased after uh, four weeks of the vital injection into the uh, knockout testes. The, this slide shows the AAV ACG, LIG CG receptor injection rescue the spermatogenesis. They restore the uh, the uh, full spermatogenesis. This is seven weeks after the vital injections. So the here is showing that the knockout animal, they underdevelop the epidermis contain no any sperm spermatozoa. And look at here after seven weeks of the viral introduction, they the uh, compare the to the wild type and heterozygous, then you can see a lot of those spermatozoa uh, are in the uh, epidermis. So the the sperm retrieved from the uh, epidermis of the uh, vital uh, genes, uh, vital inject the testes as showing that the first sperm are motile and the uh, motility uh, is, although the number of the sperm are not as good as the water type, but the motility is very close to the, uh, the water type. The, uh, this slide shows that the, the adenoviral associated factor is in IHCG receptor injection promote formation of elongated sperm material. The This is uh, the heat map of the RNA sec showing that the IHCG receptor knockout animal, the almost lack of the elongate, the, uh, the transcript for the, uh, uh, the elongated and elongating sperm material. So after the, uh, the vital particle injection, four weeks after, after the, the recovery of those gene expression for each of the, uh, the major cell type in the subunifibrous uh, uh, tubular. You look at uh, this is the monogonia, the model size, this is long sperm material and elongating sperm material. As you look at uh, the, the pattern of those gene expression is very similar to that of the uh, wild type or heterozygous animal. The immunofluorescent standing also demonstrate the uh, spermatogenesis is beyond one spermatid stage. There's elongated spermatid detectable and also elongated spermatid uh, detected from those uh, uh, vital injected and uh, knockout testes. Um, So the uh, sperm to test the fertility of those sperm uh, produced by in the knockout animal after vital injection, we retrieve or the uh, retrieve the uh, the sperm from the uh, epidermis of those uh, vital inject animal, and then in vitro fertilize to wild type and all side. So then transplant to into a pseudo pregnant 
the uh, female animal to give rise at the uh, the offspring, the pups. So because those uh, is uh, the pup is uh, is developed from the embryo that the uh, fertilized with the uh, knockout sperm with the wild type animal, a wild type all side. So they all become exozygous. They contain a copy of a wild type you know, HCG strategy and a copy of the knockout and you know, HCG genes. So, but the data, this data, the PCR data also demonstrate the those uh, first generation of the the animal, the the offspring contain no viral genome, such as that the promoter CAG, no CAG integrate into the the offspring, no exogenous of LHG receptor gene integrate into the genome. Then six weeks after, we all the we also met with the first generation of those pup with the, the male and female with the corresponding wild type male and female. They are able to give rise and the uh, second generation suggests that the sperm produced after the uh, gene therapy uh, is fertile. And they can produce uh, fertile. Fertile offsprings. Uh, this we initially mainly is uh, testing on the pubertal uh, LHC receptor knockout uh, animals. So we also testing whether or not this uh, gene therapy also can improve the the, the hypogonadal phenotype of LHC receptor knockout in adult animals. So this is a. Uh, Two months old animals, and this is uh, the uh, six months old. So we there's some uh, strategy. The A R A V A L C G receptor and uh, vital particles were inject into and uh, in the stadial space of the uh, L C G receptor knockout. The two months old of L C G receptor knockout male mice or six months. Old. So the results show similar, just like uh, I show you in the pubertal animal, they are can stimulate the uh, the uh, reestablish the sexual development. They can the uh, stimulate the uh, full spermatogenesis, and some of those uh, the and also recover the accessory sex organs, and some of those animal become fertile. So this study has demonstrated that the this gene therapy can be applied to the pre sexual mature or even adults and uh, hypogonadal uh, animals. So the uh, this is a I would say is a proof of concept study. So. It is expected that those uh, proof of concept data will set a stage for further studies and promote the potential clinical applications for gene therapy for latex cells failure. And we also recognize to hypothesize that the AAV mediated gene therapy exhibited uh, exhibit strong potential to ex exert a favorable. Uh, the effect on other type of the genetic genetic cell failure. So, um, of course, long term effect and safety study are still necessary. Um, whatever, <laughs> whether or not uh, eventually can go to a, a clinical trial, that's the another big question. Okay. Thank you for coming in. So our data is really something is pilot study and also not just the proof of concept study. But hopefully those data will inspire for further study and then they can develop the creative therapy for the hypogonadal. So um 
are the cells that are targeted by the viral vector? What what exactly cells it does it you know get into when? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. As I just mentioned, uh, the, in the stadium of the autotypy yeah. has uh, the static yeah. stem cell. Uh -huh. And those static stem cells are possible come to a pre semiferous tumor cells or pre vascular cells. So when you inject those viral particles, they might infect. The uh, those cells and those cells are capable of the uh, give rise, yeah. give rise to analytic uh, like cells, analytic cells. So that's a uh, in vivo transducing. I I I, I mean I, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so we do not have data to to characterize which cells. Yeah. Uh, eventually give rise, oh. uh, are infected by this viral particle and give rise to functional yeah. adult type yeah. lytic cell. So okay. yeah, it's a good question. Do yeah. single cell seek? So RNA seek and you know, find out which no. word it is. Well, yeah. So I, 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 we have been discussing because this is a manuscript that there is no published yet. So I, I, I think it, because since the Adaptive cells has been so it come from right. pre tubular or pre vascular cells. So when you inject it, they might infect them and then stimulate it to uh, yeah be um, differentiated. <laughs> the cell can be differentiated the process and then you like the functional. Does it take It'd be so cool to prove with RNA uh, seeking and yeah. single cell RNA. <laughs> Well, hi, Zen Men. Steve Winters here from Florida. Can I ask a question? Hey. Nice to hear you. So, you know, I thought the results are interesting, novel, and convincing. Uh, I can't figure out what human disease is characterized by isolated lytic cell failure where the pathology doesn't also severely damage the seminiferous tubules, and that why restoring the testosterone, intratesticular testosterone, might overcome that damage to the tubules. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, so your question is human? Yeah, in humans. The dysfunction is there... of the lytic cell that not cause severe spermatogenic failure? Well, it does, but there's no, there's no disease that I know of or quickly know yeah. of where the lytic cell failure is the only thing wrong. So, oh, okay. 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 the damage, yeah, but, but, the da saying like from chemotherapy, the damage oh, yeah. is the damage is mostly to the tubules. Yeah, although and, here because I'm just trying to emphasize because this model is not itself right. Right. But they can be used for, say, for example, cell transplant therapy can use for some of other hypogonadism. Right. What? What? What kind? For the treatment of the hypogonadism. Oh, you mean older men? You mean? Yeah. Well, it's extreme treatment instead of testosterone for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, for the older men because they are not needed uh, any spermatogenesis as com as versus those young people they still like to have a spermatogenesis the long term. The testosterone repressed theory can they people effect on the hypothalamus and pituitary to inhibit the gland absorption and cause the infertility, right? So yeah, yeah, for all the men, why not it? Right. So I would try to search and figure out: is there a specific disease that might benefit from this very interesting approach? Uh huh. Uh huh. Nice. 
WCT provides only testosterone for all functional recovery? Yeah, I think the many now we are just using it like testosterone as a primary marker to see how introduce those functional genes are able to recover, uh, recognize that effectively. So, Dr. Winter, you are in Florida. That's more good. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Still a bit cold here, Dr. Winter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. I, I don't know the one. It's always a tool. Yeah, I think there are questions in the chat box. Our model is very clear due to LCG without the same mutation. Then the arm we are just introduced the functional one. So that just so that's why I say it's proof of concept. Mm -hmm. They can be used utilized for for this monogenic effect of the uh, hypogonadal cause the hypogonadal disease. So yeah. Okay, Dr. Lay, there are questions in the chat box. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, so I think it's just okay. Only testosterone. But so far, we are using testosterone increase as the kind of marker to evaluate the effectiveness of the gene therapy. Yeah. So they may have some other mm -hmm. benefit, but we are not evaluating. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thanks. Thanks very much. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Have a good day. Okay, bye.